folks. Well, welcome to another episode of Chuck's a Cooking. And tonight we are going to be making a calzone and we are going to start from A to Z. We are going to start by using my pizza crust recipe, which I will leave a link to down below in the, in the show notes. And we are going to start out here. We are going to just start from scratch. I mean, totally from scratch with this. Although I'm not making my own cheese or my own sausage or anything like that that's going in it. Now, Ann, to start with, I've got a homework assignment for you. If you go back and I'm going to tell you to watch the first 15 minutes of the goulash bolognese video, because that's going to show you how I go about making my bolognese sauce. I'm going to actually use some of that bolognese sauce that I made in that video, which has been frozen since then. And I'm going to use that and turn it into my pizza sauce simply by adding a few more spices to it. So we are going to get started here. Let's get turned around. We're going to start out. We're going to bloom some yeast and then we're going to dig right in. As soon as the yeast blooms, then we're going to dig right into making the crust. And then the crust actually is going to have to rise for a couple hours, I think. Ah, We've got to let it rise for, here's my recipe actually. It's my recipe, but I don't know it by heart. It needs to rise for an hour and a half and then we'll go from there. All right, so let's get turned around. We're going to bloom some yeast. All right, so the first thing I've got to do, I've got myself a, yes I do, two teaspoons of sugar here. We're going to put that right into our this is very as warm a water as you can put your hand in, basically. Very warm water. And we need to dissolve that sugar. In warm water, it should dissolve very easily. And you know it's dissolved when it gets clear again. I don't see any crystals down in there. Now, and I've got myself a uh, regular package of dry yeast. Now I got myself a, pack, a regular package of dry yeast here. And basically the sugar is going to become the food for this yeast. And that's going to cause it to begin to come back to life. It's kind of like in uh, suspended animation here. It's, it's a, um, it's dormant at the moment, but as soon as it hits that water, it begins to come back to life again. And we're just going to give it a little stir. And as it begins to metabolize that sugar, it will begin to produce both alcohol and carbon dioxide. Just like, just as if we were fermenting beer, which I have done before in my life. At one time I was a, a pretty good home brewer. Okay, so we're going to give that about 15 minutes or so. By the time we come back, it should look totally different. All right, so as you can see, our yeast has really gone to town here. It is really uh, making a move here. All right, so let me get out my food processor. We are going to use a food processor here and we'll be right back. All right, folks, so I've got one and a half cups of whole wheat flour and one and a half cups of regular flour or all purpose flour. And if you don't want the wheat, by all means, just make it three cups of flour here or three cups of all purpose flour here. I've got one tablespoon of olive oil here. I will be using another, about another tablespoon or two when we go to move this into a bowl. I've got two teaspoons of salt. We're going to go ahead and put that in. Put our lid on. Uh -huh. 
Try not to make too big a mess here. There we go. There's that. Now we're going to pour some of our yeast right in. Or I should say our water with yeast. Sugar water with yeast. We're not going to put it all in yet. Trying to throw some stuff at me here. All right, sounds like our motor's having a little tough time here. Now then, we are very sticky here. I want to get my pastry mat out. We'll be right back. All right, so we've got our dough here. And we're gonna to begin to knead this a bit. I'm not sure if I want to add more flour to this or not. My past experience with whole wheat flour is that it will absorb quite a lot of moisture. However, as of right now, it's a little too sticky. I can't keep it off the, off the mat. It's doing all right as far as my fingers are concerned, basically. But we need to dry it out just a little bit. I think this is about perfect right here. As we knead it, it may dry out on us a bit. I'm trying to collect up all this dough. Kind of got stuck to the mat here. Now we've got to knead this for a total of a half hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut my cameras off and we'll be back in a bit. All right, folks, well, I'm about as happy as with this dough bowl as I am, have ever been with any dough bowl I've ever made, actually. And I mean, I'm really satisfied with it. Now the purpose of kneading your bread dough is to make it, to develop the gluten and make it stretchy. You see how it's doing? Perfectly. Now then what we need, we're gonna take our bowl here that we've got and we need to, I need to coat that with a little bit of olive oil. This is where that other tablespoon of olive oil is gonna come from. Kinda of like that. Need to coat our bowl. And this is so that our dough as it rises does not end up being stuck to the sides of the bowl. And now then, we need to kinda of make sure that we've got all of our seams on our dough ball here pinched together about like that don't need to get too crazy with it and we're going to sit her down right in there i've got this thing called a flour sack cloth and we're going to put this right over the top and then we're going to move this to a warm location so basically the cloth is impregnated with flour which keeps it from sticking should the dough rise up and get in contact with it and the flour is not going to hurt it so we're going to move this to a warm location and we'll be back in a few minutes and we're going to make some adjustments to our bolognese sauce while this is rising for the next hour and a half okay so i've got about a cup and a half of bolognese sauce here now it's got all the good stuff that you would normally find on a pizza or in this case our spaghetti sauce it's got the mushrooms it's got onion it's got green pepper, it's got carrot. I want to take a half a tablespoon, teaspoon I mean, that'd be the little ones. Crushed red pepper and I'm gonna put that in there. About a half teaspoon of parsley, of basil, of sage, a 
in a little bit of time. And really, I think this is about all I really need to do. Thing's about empty. Whoops. About time for some more time. Okay, so that's about a half uh, teaspoon of that as well. Now, and I want to stir that up. I'm not going to worry about heating it up. It's going to get heated in our oven here in a little bit. So because we made this bolognese sauce a while back, and it's already got our stuff, it's got all of our like vegetable goodies in it. I don't think I need to add any more to it. And again, if you, if you haven't watched that, I highly suggest go back and look at it. Or on the other hand, you can make the same thing by using your store-bought pizza sauce, adding your mushrooms or whatever other vegetables you like. I'm gonna set that out over to the side. I'll just leave my spoon in it. Our dough should be done rising here soon. And so we'll come back to it. All right, as soon as our dough is done, I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic to it. I'm also going to knead it for about five minutes to get that garlic worked into the dough. And then we're gonna go ahead and start putting things together. All right, look at that. You see how big it got? Exactly what we want. Punch it down. Then we're gonna bring it out here onto our work surface. Set my bowl out of the way. And what I'm gonna do I'm going to cut this in half because I think I'm going to be able to do what I need to do with half of this for now. I have plans for the other half tomorrow, maybe. Tomorrow, I'm sure. I'm going to wrap this into some plastic wrap and it's going to go in the refrigerator. Now, this, on the other hand, we are going to begin pressing it out. We need a little cornmeal on this, I think. Help keep it from sticking. Get out my rolling pin. One thing that I've found about rolling out bread dough for pizza crust is it'll want to shrink right back up on you. It has a tendency. I must admit, this is getting quite large. Larger than I figured it would. I think that's going to work for us. Now, and what I've got here is sandwich pepperoni. Some nice big slices, aren't they? And then I've got some sandwich salami. About like that. Now we're going to come in with our bolognese or what has been converted into pizza sauce. You can see all the chunks of good stuff in there. I don't mind at all going quite heavy with this. Might as well use a full cup and a half. Okay, good enough. Got some provolone cheese here. I think I'll get another one out in a moment. Some mozzarella cheese. Maybe it won't be necessary. Now then, I got some Romano here. If you remember back when I did the Cacio e Pepe. Cacio e Pepe. And you can find that video up in the top right hand corner. That looks pretty good. I'm going to bring this up and over. Just like that. Now we're going to pinch our edges together. I'm going to fold it up and pinch one more time. Now, I told you 500 degrees on that oven. I think I'm going to reduce that because this thing is way big. I don't think it's going to cook that far that fast. I'll leave it there. And as soon as I put it into the oven, I'm going to reduce the oven 350. I think I'm going to be able to fit that on here. Maybe I got a, I got a larger one if I need it. I think that's just big enough.
This should help keep it from sticking. Now comes the fun part. I think we can make it. Oh yeah. That wasn't bad. Pretty well centered. Now into the oven we go. Oops, not quite yet. Remember what we need to do? We need to put some slices through the, we need some vents. There we go. That ought to look good in the end. Now to the oven. I'm gonna reduce that temperature down to 350 right now, and I'm gonna check it in 15 minutes. All right, folks, look at that. It has been in there for a half hour total. As you can hear, the oil, I'm guessing, coming from the meat, and it's quite crusty there. That's a good thing. And I'm gonna let that sit for about 15 minutes. Let it rest. Let that cheese kind of solidify a little bit. Besides that, if you've never burned yourself with hot cheese, then um, I don't know if you've actually lived. Because <laughs> uh, hot pizza cheese will uh, definitely do a number on the roof of your mouth. All right, 15 minutes, we'll be back. All right, folks, well, the moment we've all been waiting for, I don't know about all of us, but I've been waiting for, anyhow. What can I say? <laughs> Okay, well, bottom's still very warm. Look at that stretchy cheese. Ouch, I gotta set that down. When I say the bottom's very warm still, it's very warm still. But there you go. Folks, I hope you can see that. There maybe, for sure. Now, it's time to get turned around here. And you know what time it is. All right, folks, it's that time. Mm -mm. We're getting ready to find out about this right now. Mm. <laughs> Folks, the taste is wonderful. One thing I'd I wish I had done. Normally when I make a pizza, I will pre-cook my pepperoni. And I wish I had done that with the pepperoni and that salami because it would have uh, taken some of the grease out of it. And I think next time I do this, I would do that. In fact, I have a video where I made a pizza. It's one of my earliest videos. In fact, it may be my first cooking video. And in that video, I did, in fact, cook my pepperoni and I didn't use salami in that, but I cook it down. And you'd be amazed how much grease your pepperoni has in it. And I think that would have made this just a little bit better. And next time I would do that. Not to say this is bad. Not at all. But I think it could be improved upon. Do me a favor. If you like what you're seeing, down here in the bottom right hand corner, hit like and subscribe. And stay tuned. There's always more to come. And thanks for watching.